Welcome to Rhinos and Aliens. Yada, 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 blah, 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 yada, 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 blah, blah, blah. Uh, milk, girls, money, power, power, and then, you know, yeah, uh, um, uh, uh, you be getting more cats thrown at you than the than the SPCA. <laughs> <laughs> Did you just make that up? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> off the top of my head, off the dome. Just no, that's the... that's 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 a good. It's a great good analogy, line. right? That's a great line. <sighs> okay. That that sounds like a line in a film that a friend is saying to one of his homies Yo. in a bar. Okay, you know how many times I've been watching movies and. Uh, and like I'd be like, you know, like some movies. Like to be fair, some movies are pretty easy to predict, like down to like the fucking line. Yeah. Yeah. But I find myself doing that so many times. Or like I'll be watching a movie and I and I'll just like say the line before they say it, mm-hmm. and I'm just like, I could have written this fucking movie. This is a, this is a million dollar movie. What type of films are you noticing that with? Streaming films, blockbuster films. Oh. I think I got the mind of a of a of a of a movie writer. It must be what it is. At least a, a little bit of it. It could be that. It could also be that films are too predictable now. Yeah. Why you got to steal my light like that? You just out here like you know what? Yeah, it could be that. But also you're not that special. <laughs> well, because I've been watching a lot of older films, and it's just night and day. And I hate to be that person because I like how modern films look. Right. And because f- they're captured better now. And yes. So I agree that's part of the reason why I can't get into certain old films and it's and it's 100% like the production value, right? Like you see like uh I, I tried to watch the the earlier Star Wars movies cuz I was like, yo, I think I want to watch them all because they're popular and they're must, they're popular must be for a reason, right? Oh, the first the first episode or I mean the first film, the fourth episode, it's I could not get past the first one. The first one ever made where like there's dudes That's in the, the worst one. Where they look like they're in like literal like high school costumes. Yeah. I was like, like And then that did you 30, get to that fight scene? I got to where they went underwater or something. They got to an underwater city. Oh, wait, wait. You're talking about episode one. Yeah, like the first, first one. So you never saw episode four, which is the first one. No, I, I, I looked up how to watch them in order, and some people in, in a couple places they, said They steered you wrong, because you won't be able to watch the original trilogy now. Well, I didn't even finish it. I got through I got. But through I'm saying, minutes. if you think that's bad, you won't be able... Oh, it's worse? Because those the orig- the first three films were made in the seventies. In the fourth episode, the fourth, fifth, and sixth episode was made between seventy seven and eighty three. You watched the one that was made in nineteen ninety, and I still couldn't get through it. Yeah. Oh my god. Or to my bad, nineteen ninety nine. Wow. Yeah. So if you're having a problem with the nineteen ninety nine film, you're fucked. Yeah. Yeah. Oh no. Like not having a problem suggests that I'm still watching it. No, 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 no. 30 minutes. I'm like, no, I can't. I, I guess I'll just... Be, be, to be fair, I, you missed one of the worst... I mean, you missed one of the best fight scenes of all time, though. I just, I'd be cool with... Just that, watching the fight scene? That, that franchise getting uh, modernized from the beginning. Yeah, but the, the new films suck. Yeah, I don't care. Just so I can get the experience of like the storyline. You want the remake? I want to see what the hype is, but like on NHD with like... Uh, proper CGI, not fucking million dollar actors in in high school, uh, costumes. Yeah, but some films now the CGI still looks bad. Oh yeah, but I mean I find those are like either like lower budget ones or like some of these Netflix original ones be looking like all polished and shit, and then you see the CGI, and you're like, eh, underwhelming. Well, but that's that's the thing people don't get with modern filmmaking because it is so prevalent and so easy to use people overuse it if you go back and watch the original jurassic park you could still tell where the cgi is but for a 1993 film there's no reason why those special effects should look as good as they do but they do yeah because you know why because only a hundred freaking shots have cgi and now you have films where 2,000 shots have cgi yeah and also the uh uh, uh, um, I feel like the story writing 
has okay. gotten lazier because it they it's like in video games, right? Where they you get carried by the graphics mm-hmm. and the CGI that you're just like, I don't need to write a good film. I just need to make it look good. Which speaking of, have you heard about The Last of Us Part One remake? Yes. How are you feeling about it? This might sound dumb. I'm just I'm very annoyed they couldn't wait a year to celebrate ten years. You already waited nine years. You can't oh, I wait. Didn't think of that. But you know what? They're they they're coming out. They're working on uh, the Last of Us factions. Is yeah, that the online thing. Yeah, and I think that comes out the next year, if the if the rumor is, is true. So maybe that's going to be the tenth year anniversary kind of celebration. Like, hey, to celebrate ten years of the Last of Us, now we're in, everybody can join in and play. But this is what people forget: they released the Last of Us only in 2013. Then they released the remastered in 2014. Right. So this is the third version of a game in nine years. I love it. It's my favorite game of all time. The Last of Us Part Two was great visually. The story was a little underwhelming, even though it still held up, just well, because it's The Last of Us. Well, this game is being promoted as this, The Last of Us Part One, but with the graphics and gameplay of Part Two. That's exactly what I always wanted. When I saw, after I played Part Two, I was like... Why couldn't the first one if, play if, like this? No, but because I, I I know why because it was older. But having seen what is achievable now, I was like, I will pay any money to be able to play The Last of Us Part One with these graphics and gameplay. And then they said, "Bet hold my beer, I get you that." Part Two looks better than most PlayStation Five games, bro. That's what I'm saying. And now you're gonna get Part One with. Basically, PlayStation Five graphics. Oh, it's supposedly it's built from the ground up for the PlayStation Five. Yeah, have you seen some of the trailers and like comparisons and shit? I did, bro. Like the eye movement, the twitching, like the twitching of the some eyelids. of the characters don't even look like the characters. The fucking walk, the clickers, like they look so different. Yeah, like so detailed. Like I'm so fucking excited. I might come when I open that game. But my point is, you're so. You're so fine. You're in such a financial crunch. You can't wait a year. You are. My thing is, you already. This isn't a situation where they remade the game uh, six or seven years. So I understand you're not going to wait ten years. Ah, uh, bro. If they just waited six months, it's the ten year anniversary. On when the is the ten year anniversary? Well, it's well, it's not six months. It's eight and a half. It's uh, June twenty twenty three, and they're releasing it at the end of September. I'm cool with that. That's one of my birthday. I already told, I already told Tiff that's what I want for my birthday. I said, give me Firefly Edition, even though it's sold out in another 24 hours. Dude. But they're definitely going to restock. I was like, I don't want anything but that. The Firefly? Dude, you know you're completely overpaying. You get jack shit with that. I don't give a shit. I paid 300 and something for the Ellie Edition in part two. Like, <laughs> all it did was come with a statue and some stickers. <laughs> The statue was giant. That shit was sexy. I'm like, I, I, you understand? This is my favorite video game of all time. So I was like, I'll pay. Whatever. I don't spend that much money on video games. I know you don't. So it's like, yeah, I'll, I'll splurge for this shit. But well, And I'm, for this one, I'm not even buying it myself. But I'm saying, why splurge if you're not getting anything in return? Because it's a collector. Yeah, but what, what comes with it? It's a steel case and I think uh, some more artwork. Yes, and but you're paying what twice the amount of money for that? No, no, it's like seventy nine or sixty nine ninety nine for the regular edition, and it's ninety nine ninety nine for the Firefly. Mm, okay, that's the other thing. It's only ninety nine. I I fuck with the still book, but I'm not paying thirty extra dollars for that still book. Uh, I'm not either. <laughs> <laughs> Tiff is. <laughs> yeah. So you you still you, you still you're not a fan of part two. No, no, I love part two. I just think like it's so hard to live up to part one standards. Okay, but let's say part one never existed, and let's say part two was a completely new franchise or a standalone game. Oh, what? I think I would have appreciated it a million times more because the gameplay is so beautiful. The storyline still holds up. It's just compared. That's the key word. Compared to the first one, so do how you, do you? So is the first one, in your opinion, it's the greatest narrative? Ever in the video games, greatest game ever made. Wow! I know you can then break down categories like, oh, best open world. It's not open world, so I can't. No, be but, that. but but I'm saying narrative wise, just just straight up writing, acting, story, fucking execution, everything. Wow! And it's like, it, and the thing that that does that for me, it's the it's the the genre. That whole like apocalyptic, post apocalyptic world mm-hmm. is like right up my alley. 
So like the fact that they were able to like take that and make it that good. Because I feel like you can go... And it felt original. Yeah, because you can go... there. There's been so many... Like, Days Gone, I, th- I thought it was a beautiful game. But it has it has flaws. Where I'm looking at... Like, but the it's last still one. underrated. Oh, hella underrated. You know they considered making a part two and Sony said nah? Because of the fucking Metacritic score, which those scores were day one uh, scores. They didn't count the patches. So if you look up most of those scores, the reason why I got such low scores is because of bugs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember because when I played it, I, I experienced a couple bugs, but I'm like, these aren't n- d- like bad enough to make me not want to play the game or, or to not enjoy the game. You know what pisses me? I don't know if you know about this, but games like Fallout and Skyrim, s- some sometimes the bugs are so bad, it literally crashes PlayStation systems. Yeah, those games get fucking 90 plus Metacritic scores. And then you have Days Gone, which I even think has a fresh take on the whole zombie thing. Yeah, yeah. It was like The Last of Us meets uh, um, The Walking Dead, I, I thought. Because it's open world, there's side missions, you got a motorcycle, so you look like Daryl on a fucking motorcycle. But then it's The Last of Us uh, sense of uh, the mood. The mood, yeah. Yeah. And it's very, it's low key emotional. Yes, and it's very beautiful. It's not like set in the middle of the city, like the. Oh no, it's Oregon. Alone. You yeah. know, you know that's uh, based in Oregon. Yeah. Did and you? So you did you play the game? Did you beat it? I didn't beat it, but I have played it. Yeah. I haven't been in any games in a long time, oh, but shit, yeah. But I like to play some of these games ju- just so I could say I've experienced it. Yeah. So. Oh, you got you got to finish it. It's good. I hope they change their mind. From what it, it's not, the, the the stuff I've read, they're not sounded their like mind. it wasn't. A conclusive, like it was up in the air, but then it decided not to. But they're like, "Hey, you never know." Really? Yeah, that's what that's what I got out of it, though. That it wasn't like, no, they completely closed the door on it. Because two of the three co-founding individuals of the development team, they left that studio because Sony canceled the sequel. And the yeah, reasons why, independently, <laughs> the reasons why they canceled, okay, because it came straight down to it was strictly Metacritic that's score. Stupid. Because the game sold, uh, last time I checked, it was nearly 5 million copies, which for original IP. I was, uh, I wish they would have added co-op to that game. That would have been the perfect game to add co-op to. Well, supposedly the new game that that studio is making is going to do that. So it's like Days Gone, unofficial sequel. It's we're, not, we're not calling it the sequel. Well, but that's what it is. Well, supposedly they they spent a year making the sequel, and then when they got when it got canned, they just took the scraps and they're making a new IP, but it's going to use all the same mechanics. So, hey, listen, if it's dude, anything the horde close modes to- in that game are I. Because I remember the first time, the first trailer for that was in 2016, and you were so hyped because this is when yes. you were still into the Walking Dead show. And yes. You, and this, of all the games that they showed at that showcase, that was the game that stood out to you the most. I remember when the, when I, when the first glimpse of it came out uh, at, uh, at the event, I think it was like E3 or whatever. Yeah. Everybody thought that uh, The Last of Us 2 was getting announced. Yes. Because it looked so much like it. And I think that's what I really uh, low-key appreciate about it. It was like, man... It's The Last of Us with the open world concept that a lot of people would have liked to see. Like, what if The Last of Us could be made on a on a on an open world uh, platform? Yes, but the thing is, too, it is The Last of Us, but it's completely not. It's one of those right. those situations to where it has so many similarities. Yet when you when you really play the game, it's very different. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, I think the honestly the only comparison is it's it's it, they're both post apocalyptic. Yeah, that's about where the comparison ends, and well, they're both beautiful in terms of like the vegetation and the location, right? Even though The Last of Us is more rural or urban, yeah, more urban, urban setting, yeah. Uh, but just the overgrowth and all the vegetation makes it feel like it's kind of out in the mountains. And for an open world game, that game still looks great. Yeah, that's what I was very surprised with, and it's fucking massive. Do, yes. Yeah, and I, like, the different changes where you're going from one place to another, and, and, and it starts snowing, and it starts raining, and there's a storm. And, and depending on what the weather is doing or just depending on the time of the day, certain events can transpire differently. Yes. Did, have you noticed that? Yes. Like hordes, you wouldn't see as many like... Or like those those uh, wolf, uh, the zombie wolves, or there's like zombie yes. beasts and stuff. Yes. Yeah. 
Yo, the crazy thing about that game, I remember when I when it, before I bought the game, well, my sister bought it for me. I would see the the gameplay of people fighting against these hordes, and I'm just like, there's no fucking way. Oh, you, you how did, are you doing this? Yeah, there's so many of them, and dude, just, hundreds. Yeah, and then the first time I took on a horde, like they completely overwhelmed me in the first like twenty tries, and I'm just like, this is impossible. This is impossible. But then, like, yeah, you upgrade your weapons enough, yeah. and you start setting up traps, and you're like, okay, this is actually fucking fun. I used to dread having to do them. Yeah, I was like, oh, horde, fuck off, and I was just like, bring them on. Well, I'm, I'm glad good. you enjoyed the game. Yeah. Because uh, one podcaster I listened to, he that was, because he hates how people base their judgment on critic scores or whatever or what the masses are saying, uh-huh. and he, that to this day is in his top five for most underrated games for the PlayStation Four. So fucking good. I, I don't think I play enough games to to, to rate it. Yeah, but just well with, compared with the to games the games I've played, it's fucking just oh. And, and you already know about the Metacritic score. You know it's not a fucking 77 game. No. And I, I keep seeing on my on my PlayStation Store that it's, it, it, I guess it got some kind of... PlayStation 5 upgrade. Yeah. Yeah. So I've been wanting to kind of play it again. I, I doubt I'd notice the oh, difference. Oh, you got a PlayStation 5? Yeah. They've got it for me, uh, you know this, like two years ago for uh, for Christmas. Two years ago, the year it came out, it came out September or whatever. Twenty twenty. Yeah, and she was October. able. Yeah, she got it for me. Uh, that December. How? Right after Christmas, like we ordered it right before Christmas. How did she get so it? I did it. Oh. I spent. I because at the time Walmart would 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 tweet out like, "Hey, we're gonna do a a restocking." Yeah. Uh, available at twelve p.m. And then you go on twelve oh one gone. Yo, dude, Buffalo, it's basically impossible. Bro, but it was wild. So I was like, so I, she had given me her credit card just in case that I ever did find it. I could just buy it. And then she'd be like, yeah, that's your gift, right? So I actually ended up paying for half of it. I offered to pay half of it because since it seemed impossible to get, she ended up getting me a different Christmas present. And then that oh. day when I found it, I ordered it. She goes, did you just buy a PS5? I was like, yeah, don't worry. I'll pay for it. She goes, just pay for half. I was like, okay, bet. But so, so that day, Walmart... Posted it, right? Go, oh, it, it, we're going to uh, 12 o'clock. So I got on at 12, got it in my cart like I always do. Right when I'm about to pay, gone. Then I, I'm about to log off the website, and it goes, another drop in 15 minutes. I'm like, oh, bet. Let's go. 15 minutes. I get on, put it on my cart, go to pay. Yes. Gone. I'm like, fuck. And then they go, another drop in 15 minutes. I'm like, all right, today's the fucking day. Y'all got time. I got money, right? <laughs> the third drop. I get on, and I, I I don't know that too many people, they must have just, after the second one, just gave up or not seen that there was another drop. But I'm I'm just fascinated that there's three drops with There what? was more. Every 15 minutes, there was one. Wow. Yeah. I'm guessing it's the, I'm guessing they don't put them all available at once so the, the site doesn't crash. So that way you get, like, a rush, people leave, and then you're able to, like, get the website going again yeah. for the next rush. So in that That's, third rush, you I was got able, lucky. Then in that third rush, I was like, "Boom!" My credit card was pre-saved and everything. I had it all loaded, so I just had yeah. To well, after buy. the first two tries, right? <laughs> shipping everything was loaded. I just had to get at the cart, yeah. and then once they got to the screen of your car, just put buy. place order. That's yeah. it. That's the time where it would crash, and it would, once you hit buy, it would be like, "Oh, it's out of or, out of sight." And this time it was like confirmation number. I'm like. Wow. Nah. So what games have you been playing on the PlayStation 5? Do you even uh, still have your PlayStation 4? No. You got rid of it? Yeah. I sold it to my sister. Oh, okay. Yeah, because she likes 2K. <laughs> she was like, I'll give you like, I think it was like 80 bucks for it or something, or like 100. I was like, yeah, whatever. Yeah. What am I going to do with it? Well, that that in terms of the hardware, it's not even worth 8 bucks now. So Yeah, well, I mean... And now you see, like, uh, because of the chip shortage, they're not making as many PS5s. So instead, they're 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 uh, making more PS4s. I'm like, no one wants more PS4s. Really? Everybody that wants a PS, that's what I heard. That they were like, yeah, to combat the PS5 shortage, we're gonna make more PS4s. I'm like, everybody that wants a PS5, already. most already have a PS4, yeah. if not an, a, a previous generation system. Yo, those shortages are killing PlayStation Five cells. Bro, I don't understand how it's almost. It's getting worse. Two years later, and it's getting worse. Bro, the amount of people that I used to play, well, I only really play with like four people online like once a month, but like the new Battlefield, I've been, I've been holding out on getting it because oh, I don't want to. Yeah, I heard not great things about it, but. And I don't there's give no a campaign. Shit. Yeah, but I don't give a shit about that. I don't play the campaign, anyways. Oh, so why don't you buy it? 
Because I, I like playing online, but I like playing online with people. I don't want to play online with random people. Oh. And that's why I've been holding out on getting it, because I was like, well, it, until Nate or Manny or both get one, yeah. then I'll buy it. Because Manny has it for his... He bought the new Xbox, like, fucking idiot. Well, you know why well, he got it? Was it was available. That's what he said. And I was, that's I was why. Like, I was like, so... Yo, but the crazy part is that people have been getting the new Xbox solely because it's they can't available. they yeah. can't get the PlayStation yeah. 5. Which is horrible for PlayStation. Like you're getting outsold. I don't know if outsold probably at this well, point. Well, the past three months they've been outsold by Xbox. Overall, and it's, or is PlayStation still selling better? Oh, overall, but I'm saying for the past, each month over the past three months, Xbox has outsold PlayStation, at least in the United States, because the PlayStation is not there's not enough uh consoles in demand. Dude, let this shit sink in. The first month, well, the first day, the first week, the first month, the first three months, and the first six months, PlayStation 5 was easily outselling the PlayStation 4. Now, going on nearly two years later, the PlayStation 4 is outselling the PlayStation 5. And solely off the fact that you cannot get a PlayStation 5 anywhere, I assume. Yeah. Yeah, that's fucking stupid. And the craziest part is that... Uh, you. We started hearing these shortages problems around 2021. Uh-huh. And they were saying, oh, by 2022, it'll be better. It'll be easier to get a PlayStation 5. It's the complete opposite. Yo, so, Jord- at least for Buffalo, for, uh, Jordan, he just got his PlayStation 5. He had to go through a third party to get his PlayStation 5 because literally all the main uh, companies, Walmart, Target, uh, ex- even GameStop, literally, you can't get... You you can't even think about getting it in store, and every single time there's a drop online, it's sold out within seconds. So did he? Did he overpay for it? Yeah. Oh damn! See, I would not do that. I just I don't play enough to to to, but to motivate much. I know, but my thing is, you do that, and you're just giving you're 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 validating these scalpers that do that shit, and that pisses me off. Like the, these fucking scalpers are ruining it. There's videos circulating of dudes with entire minivans. Of PlayStation 5s. In the hood selling that shit. I'm like, bro, that's an easy lick for someone who don't give a fuck. That is a good point. Yeah. Yeah. Like, what are you doing with all your fucking minivan doors open? Yeah, you should only... it's bottom to top stack with PS5. If I was a scalper, I would only do that online. Yeah. Yeah. I guess he was delivering them, but I'm like, at least get a fucking, like, Mercedes... That's tens of... of, Yeah, that are bulletproof? Yeah, or not even bulletproof, at least no windows. Like like an Amazon kind of van. Oh, this is like a typical van with windows? Like a mom van with, like, the sliding doors, and you could clearly see top to bottom full of PlayStations and a few Xboxes. I'm like, bro, that's thousands of dollars of a product that everybody wants right now, and you in the hood. (laughs) People will rob you in broad daylight for a watch. I know. Common sense is a common. Bro, it? that's the problem. Yeah. It's fucking wild, man. I'm not saying I'm the smartest man, but some decisions people just you don't. Know what I'm like, you understand why some people get targeted. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, there's some people make a living off of that shit. Yeah. Yeah. It's fucking ridiculous. That's wild. Yeah. So what games have you, have you purchased for that or played first? For PS5? Yeah, that actually take full advantage of the 5. Not just the mini upgrade, but it was made for the 5. I don't know. Let me see. Let me let me look at my PlayStation app and see if uh, I haven't played in so long. Uh, Dude, it's going on months for me, so. Fuck, eh? Oh, wait, that's not it. Is it here? Um, Not Red Dead. Spider-Man Miles Morales? Oh, okay. That one's for PS5 specifically, right? Yes, yes. That one, and literally that's it. And I thought that was a great fucking game. I was not expecting much, and the reason I I don't normally buy... Spider-Man? Yeah, I don't normally buy those kind of games. Yeah, superhero games? Yeah, but I was watching um, the the new Spider-Man movie. Uh, Not the brand new, the one that just came out like recently, but the one before that. Oh, the one with... The second one. Mysterio? The second one. Far From Home? Yeah. That one was dope. And I was like, it's such a, it's such a dope movie. So I was like, ah, maybe I'll try the, the Spider-Man game. Miles Morales? Yeah. So I bought it. Fucking loved it. Beat it in like three days. The super short campaign. And that's with like work and stuff. 
but it was very entertaining. I actually enjoy shorter games now. I thought the fighting was going to get very repetitive because every kind of gameplay I'd seen, it was like, oh, you show up to a scene to fight bad guys, and it's the same shit every fucking time. Yeah. Nothing. They, they even look the same. Yeah. But, but I was like, give me more. Well, supposedly this, because I haven't played it, this game... Because you know there was a game before this, yeah, with the with Peter Parker, yeah, and that got rave reviews, but more or less unanim- unanimously, everybody says this was an improvement in every. So like so I, I I I in a, in a way I wanted to go back and play the first one after playing the first the second one, but after seeing exactly that that the second was that much better, I'm like I don't I don't care for the first one anymore then, <laughs> because I kind of in the in the beginning of the second one they kind of catch you up. Oh yeah, story wise. Yeah, right? so they're like, so I was like, ah, at this point, I'd just be going just to, to play as a different Spider Man. Yeah, when you really think about games as a whole, is very repetitive. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, and that's like even Grand Theft Auto like storylines would bug me because of that. It was like, oh yeah, different mission, same shit, steal Dude, a car, kill a couple people, different car, different location, but it's the same shit. I can't, I can't stand open world games anymore, bro. They're just. For what you just said, and they're just so overstuffed. Yeah, and well, I even don't... Days Gone was kind of that, right? It was like, that's the only thing that I didn't like about it because because it's such a big world. But because the scenery was so unique, that's what. Yeah, and that's the reason I also am okay with Red Dead, even though I still have not beat it. I'd get as far. I'd, I've gotten as far as like thirty ish percent completion, and I'm assuming that's just story mode, right? Because there's so many fucking side quests that you can do. Yo, but supposedly the story mode alone is 60 plus hours. Yeah. Not, not including all the side stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So I really want to beat it, but it's just, it's so long. And what bugs me is it's so fucking big. And to do it on horseback. Yeah. And and and, a lot, and then it ends up being a lot of that. Sometimes it's like, oh, now you got to go beat this person up and demand some money. And it's like, it seems like it's just thrown in there to extend the game as opposed to have any real purpose. But to be fair, to be fair to open world games, if you were, for example, a, a, a bandit back then or you were a Viking, life was repetitive. Yeah, I guess so, right? Like, what, if you're well, a bandit, you, what are you going to do? Stick up people and kind of commit crimes? In this well, situation? well, look at our life. Yeah. If, if they made a game about being a barber. <laughs> she. That would be boring I, as fuck. You got to perfect that fade. <laughs> but that's that's the life we live. Yeah. No, it's true. It's just that you want to... And a video game is supposed to be an escape. Yeah, and the thing, too, is that too often we look at video games through the scope of film, but films, we only see the highlights of the story. Okay, yo, question. So I've been notice, noticing this a lot lately. You ever play video games and you see the way characters, like NPCs, interact? Like, let's say in cutscenes on The Last of Us, right? Okay. The way a character will come in and say a certain thing and behave okay. and then walk away. And sometimes you're just like, mm, I don't think that that's how real life people behave, right? Like, people don't come in and say that the way they said it and sound the way they said it and then just exit the room. And I've been watching movies and noticing off characters or even main characters will come in, certain movements, say certain things and leave. And I'm just like... That's exactly like a video game scene, like a cutscene. And it, I don't know if it's making me appreciate video games more or appreciate movies less. The fact that they are almost essentially the same. Because it used to bug me that it was I, I would play video games and see these cutscenes, and I was like, damn, I feel like this that narrative could have been pushed with a little bit better writing from that character. But then I'll watch movies, and I'll see almost... So is it the writing or the acting for you? I think it's both, but I, I, I find it more, I think, a little bit, it's the lines. Since they'll, they'll feel cheesy in a video game, but then I'll see it in a movie in, in kind of same, similar circumstances, and I'll be like, oh, that sounds actually like what a character in a cutscene would say in a video game. I know what you're saying is just, it's so, all, it's all over the place, so I can't give you a, yeah. a general I response. know, it's, it's a very weird kind of thing to notice. Because my thing with explain. film now... It appears that the writing is getting worse, but the acting is obviously much better. Yeah. Oh, I don't, yo, people get trained so young. I don't care what anybody says. E- even the quote unquote classic films, if it's pre nineteen ninety, the acting's trash. Bro, it just everything has gotten better. Uh, sports. You see athletes now 
they're like elite at like such young levels compared to like yo. I feel they, like they might be more like, elite, but they're more brittle too. So well, yeah, but they also last longer too. But just into no, but bro, just in terms of talent alone, you see like with some of these like like <laughs> high school students or like uh, uh, do college. they actually last longer though? Because for well, me, not I'm, for not themselves, I'm, but like just the, the, where medicine has gotten, where like they they're able to rehab certain injuries and and yeah, but they're getting careers. more more injuries though. Like that's 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 the issue. Chris Paul, yeah, he might play until forty, but he missed half his fucking games. Yeah, but I don't know how 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 was that in comparison to the people back then when they would play like ten years. But but I'm saying like for example Michael Jordan he only played 13 years but he played 90 percent of his games right would I rather have that or somebody who plays 20 seasons but he only plays 70 percent of his games uh depending how good that that person is at that age. like if it's a LeBron James but, I'd rather LeBron James play five more years if he's still gonna average 30 fucking points at 40 but years if old. he's only playing 50 games it doesn't fucking mean anything because his team's still fucking losing. I don't think LeBron James... I don't think the Lakers lost because LeBron James wasn't available as much. I think it's because Westbrook was doo-doo. And even though I, I have been saying it to many people, the he Lakers was, suck in this season was not entirely on, on Westbrook. I'm not going to go as far as saying he had nothing to do with it, but he definitely was not alone. The well, reason he, he, he... If the rumors are true that the moment he got traded, he didn't respect the coach, then he was the problem. Yeah, but also AD, who is a vital part of uh, of the team, missed half the fucking season. Yeah, but and when the times he played, he was made of glass and didn't do shit. It just feel like he had no effort. Did you see that video after the season ended where it's the, he said he hasn't shot a ball since April? Hey, I I've been saying this for years. The fact that the owners agree to guaranteed contracts, they're fucking idiots. If I'm LeBron James and I see AD talking about having shot a ball in three months. I'm calling Palenka, whoever the fuck is in charge of that team, like trade this but, bum now. But LeBron wanted AD and LeBron wanted Westbrook. That's he, another reason why I hate people scapegoating, oh, LeBron has, has no help. I'm like, LeBron has no help because LeBron got no help. LeBron, he's, he's he a terrible GM. GM. Yeah. Even though objectively you can look at LeBron as a GM, four rings and 10 finals appearances, fine, whatever. From that context, how many other But that's GMs more so done? because LeBron the player, not LeBron the GM. Right, but you still need a, a supporting cast to get that far, even yeah, though but, LeBron is 60% of the fucking team. But think about his most successful run. It was when he wasn't the GM. That was in Miami. The right. only GMing he did was he wanted to team up with Dwayne Wade. He right. didn't even get Chris Bosh. In, 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 uh, in Cleveland, I think he did fine. It's just you ran into that juggernaut Warriors team that many times. It's but, like, but still, you can make the case that him being the GM... He should have kept Wiggins, because Kevin Love ended up being injured the first season, anyways. Yeah, but that was the 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 the, the um what's his name uh Olenek injury, right? He didn't get injured from being old. He just got fucking his arm pulled out of place. Yeah, but so you Kev- can argue that's not Kevin's Love's age fault. Kevin Love's age fault. Right. Yeah, but he was never a f- post Minnesota. He was never a eighty plus game a player ever again in Cleveland. Every go every season he's played less than eighty games compared to the Minnesota years. He's played significantly less games. True. I and thought you were gonna go with his production being less, but I was like, oh, that's part of LeBron just being an. Oh super no no team, no! Right? I'm going by availability yeah. because everybody wants to say injuries. And Best you could ability had, is availability. Yes. Yeah. And look at Andrew Wiggins. Look at how he balled out in the finals. But do you think Andrew Wiggins does that with as a rookie with LeBron James and Kyrie Irving on the team? Well, he had no accountability in Minnesota, and look at how he didn't do shit. LeBron would have held him to a high. I'm just gonna put it like this. Look at how, from a mentality perspective. Look how different he plays with veterans, with the Warriors, compared to how he played in Minnesota. So you're telling me if he had that as a rookie from the get-go? Historically, do you think LeBron James makes his team's teammates better, or he just gets them rings? Because I saw this argument online, I was like, "That's fucking valid." Because I don't, I've never been on the side to believe that LeBron James makes teammates better. I think historically, LeBron what type James, of players are we talking about? If we're talking about non role players, he'll make better. Yes, star players do not get better with LeBron James. And then I don't think it's the, the well. Thing. I would make the case the one star player he made better was Kyrie. 
Yeah. Well, I think he made him a winner. I think Kyrie was already phenomenal without. He taught him how to win, but I don't think, like, he, that, Kyrie was so good already that I think all he added to Kyrie's game is championships, right? Or, like, a championship. Whereas, oh, I, like, I would say experience. Yeah, of course. Yeah, now you got further in your career. Yeah. But I think for a lot of these other star or superstar players that get paired up with LeBron, it's like, no, if anything, your your uh your value decreases or not your your production decreases. Obviously, you have to share the court with fucking LeBron James. Your accountability goes through the roof cuz if you fucking lose a championship or a game, oh you LeBron didn't have enough help. And if you win a game, oh LeBron James balled out. LeBron James carried there's no winning to playing with LeBron James unless you're a role player with nothing to lose. I wouldn't want to play with LeBron James. If I was a star player, I would not want to play with LeBron James. If I was a role player on a good LeBron James team, hell yeah. All I did was hit a couple big threes in the corner, and everybody was like, yo, that's a fucking specialist right there. But like, yeah, no, LeBron only passed it to me two times. <laughs> yeah, my my this whole COVID stuff changed my mind on LeBron. Do you appreciate him more or less? Oh, hella less. And you didn't like him that much before? No. Really? I would have thought after he came into the Lakers and, and, and won y'all another title that you'd be like, yeah, I'll, I'll fuck with that. Yeah, but the past two seasons has completely eroded that. Yeah, but what, what were the Lakers doing before LeBron James got there? Although, to be fair, I saw this one thing that the Kyle Kuzma year, uh, I think his second year, they had the same record. They actually, they had a, a few games better record than this season that just passed with the Lakers. So it's like, yeah, LeBron, AD, Russ, and that Cal Kuzma, Lonzo team had a better record at the end of the season. Yeah. That's and fucked. My thing is, too, look at all the players that the Lakers have drafted and what they're doing on other teams. Bro, because the LeBron James effects. So you're like, we can't have rookies. Uh, th- this player we drafted is but somewhat that- good. Trade him for someone proven, which sucks b- with having LeBron James on your team, which is why I don't want LeBron James back on my team. I've seen rumors of like, oh, maybe he'll retire in Miami. I don't believe that at all. I think he's like, retiring in Cleveland. And, and my thing with that, too, is that, okay, you got AD, but why did you give up all the possibilities of... Uh, Resigning Caruso, resigning that one, uh, that one uh, three and D person to get Westbrook, bro. I can't like you. Would... And they gave up DeRozan and Buddy Hield, bro. DeRozan was going to sign on the on like a six seven million dollar contract, and Buddy Hield he was going to take it, uh, the the mid level exception. Yes, because I heard that's why that he didn't go to Miami because of that. He wanted to be paired up again with with Kyle Lowry, but he's like, nah, I can I can make way more money, and that came out to be a but don't factor. forget. He grew up in Compton. So That's true. Lakers. That's true. But the Lakers didn't offer it to him because they got Westbrook. That's dumb. That's why it that's why it's hard to defend LeBron James this year. It's like, nah, bro, I don't feel bad. Oh, it's a wasted year. Oh no, we he, wasted LeBron's thirty point year at the wasted years his old. Year. I'm like, bro, look at the team you built around yourself. And you you tweet out, Oh, yeah, say what you want about my team, keep up that same narrative. Uh, I'm gonna show ya blah 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 blah. Yeah. I'm so sick of it, dude. Yeah. Cause he, yeah, he's u- he he's used that too many times with the Lakers now. Yeah. And don't and this is coming from the person if AD doesn't get injured. I think they're going to the finals last year. They, people forget this. They were up two games to one, and they were winning by halftime against the Phoenix Suns before AD gets injured in the second half. Yo, that collapse this year was so beautiful by Phoenix. Yo, look at Doncic, man. Yo, okay. So I love... Um, I, I, I was such a big fan of Devin Booker before he b- get, got this like really good team. Okay. Because I was like, he needs help. And I was on the side of get him some help. Yeah. Right? Because he's like such a waste of talent, not doing shit without a good team. Then he gets a good team, goes to one finals appearances, uh, appearance, blows a 2-0 lead, and is the cockiest motherfucker for having only been to the finals one time, understandably. So it was a hard West. But you, you choke a 2-0 lead. And they and lost you, in six games in that se- in the finals too, right? Yeah, no, they won the first two and then lost four in a row. And they did the same thing against Dallas in the second round. Yes, yeah, 
But I'm saying they did the exact same thing against yeah, Dallas. And talking all that fucking shit. But it was even more embarrassing against Dallas because they won the first two games in more dominant fashion than against Milwaukee. But then they lost those four games in worse fashion. Bro, and the, and it's also more embarrassing because the first year, it's your first year in the finals. You can excuse it to a degree, even though it was the Bucks' first year too. But, you know, Greek freak. But I don't blame Chris Paul though, bro. No, 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 no. I just I don't like how cocky he got either after going to one finals appearances. But if anybody can be cocky, it's Chris Paul, right? Like I don't think any Chris Paul not not having been to the finals before is entirely his fault. And besides that series, he was the most clutch fourth quarter player in the league. Yeah, bro. I just like Devin Booker got so cocky after one one good team that I'm just like I can't. Like when 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 it was when they were up two zero against uh, Luca. And there's that clip of like Luca holding the ball, and he goes and takes the ball from him, and then oh, Luca goes. See that. Yeah, so like Luca has the ball. There's like a a, um, a dead ball situation. Okay. And Devin runs over to get the ball, and Luca kind of holds it up, and he like smacks it out of his hand, and then Luca just kind of like, bitch ass, like. Well, maybe that was the spark. Yeah, that's what everybody posted. And then also, did you see when once they lose two zero and they're going into the tunnel, Luca goes. Everybody talk tough when they're up. Everybody talk tough when they're up. Is that what he said? Yeah. Next two games, they tie the series. Dude, I love Luca. Oh, Dude, he's so I, fucking. I likeable. still stand by this. If he had any support in those two series against the Clippers, he beats the Clippers both times. Yeah. Because people forget the the first series is that uh Kristop gets injured, and that's why they ended up losing in seven. And then the second time they went up against the Clippers, he was a non factor, so they lost in six games. I want nothing more than to see Luca win a, a title in his career. Uh, Dude, I don't know that gamer. I want him. I don't know that I want him to do it while the Heat are in there. In there, can we just quickly touch at the up window about Jimmy Butler, bro? The most disrespected, bro. Listen, I am on the side of people who say he is not superstar talent because. There he's are, a superstar there are in, 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 in the, the playoffs. playoffs. Yes. yes, that's what I was gonna go. I don't think he's a superstar player all the time. In There's general. levels to this let, shit. Let's just say in general. There are like four superstars. That's it. And he's a star, a very, though. Oh, he is. He is the closest thing to a superstar without being a superstar. What? Just off his playoff performance. Yes, I Performances. agree. Performances. How, how many players average 21 points per game in the regular season and then they bump up their playoff po- points per game by seven, eight points? You know the last player that, that, uh, that I remember that had a uh, better statistical playoff performance than his regular LeBron? season, Kawhi. And everybody oh, made w- such a big deal about Toronto? it. With Toronto? Yes, because his playoff numbers would increase but, uh, his points, his percentage. But his- I think that's misguided because he would play so little. He played so little in that regular season with Toronto. Right, but that's, so that's what I'm, what I'm getting at. Everybody made such a big deal about Kawhi doing that, but uh, Jimmy did that, and everybody was just like, yeah, but look who he's playing against. You're like, what? Who he's playing against? Last year, what, the, like the, the, the number one year, defense in the past twelve seasons. The bubble year, they had a great run. Everybody said it's the bubble. Then the next year, they get swept by the eventual champions. They were like, "Oh, see, it was the bubble." And then this year, they do it again, where they're one Jimmy Butler three from making the finals again. And they were the worst team. Yeah, they were. Oh, well, they were the outman teams. Yes, bro. They were. They went from being the best three point shooting team in the regular season to, to uh, the worst playoff shooting team I think in recent NBA history. Oh yeah, it was. It was got. But uh, the, that one white player was injured. He was hobbled the entire series. Uh, Tyler Hero. Yeah, for, yeah. For, for against the Celtics, he was basically injured the entire series. Yeah. And Kyle lowry has been injured since game two of the playoffs. Jimmy Butler was playing on a bum knee. The, for three games. Yes. Yeah. And, dude, he put up, he averaged, what, 40 points the last two games? Yeah. Yeah, because he put up 46 in game six. And then 36 and in then, game, yeah. game seven? Yeah. Bro, to think. Like, and that, he's a defender while doing this. Yeah, he was doing everything. It wasn't he just like, oh, I'm Jason Tatum and I just put, put up points. Dude, it was a crime that Jason Tatum got the... Eastern Conference Finals MVP. Bro, I was so fucking heated. I'm like, stop giving these awards to the winning team. I know, like, generally that's what you do. But I'm like, in this situation, Jimmy on a bum knee outplayed uh, this dude all the way around. Well, this is the thing, too. People, uh, they don't understand what MVP means. It's most valuable. So, 
When you say this person is an MVP, if you take them off that team, what is that team doing? If you take Tatum off the Celtics for that series, yes, they're losing the series, but it's going, I would say, six games, right? Yeah. If you take Butler off of the Heat, they're getting swept. Yeah. Oh, by that fucking Celtics team? Yes. They're getting swept. Especially so, with Kyle Lowry hurt, Tyler Hero hurt. Yeah. So how on planet Earth can the Celtics lose their MVP and still make it a six-game series? Yeah. Yet the Heat lose their, who should have been the MVP, and they get swept. Yeah. H- how is that comparison? Bro, I, as much as I, as much, for, for as much love as I have for Jason Tatum, he is the most overrated now he star is. player. Oh, now he is. Bro, I've never seen a star player get carried and bailed out as much as Jason Tatum. Oh, especially this in the dude, finals? This dude can have entire bad series and gets, and as long as Jalen Brown saves you a game or two, they're like, oh, it's the Jason Tatum effect. I want I want people to stop comparing Tatum to Kobe because he's nothing like Kobe. No, and I just want to know why Jalen Brown having similar stats. If anything, if I'm not mistaken, I would rather these have playoff him. series. Jalen Brown, the entire playoff series, or the entire playoffs, Jalen Brown had better numbers than Jason Tatum. And but not only better numbers, he he had the dog in him. And one is considered a superstar by some people, and the other is just the 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 the, just a star. the beta. Yeah, bro. I, I want to see if Jalen and I, I don't even think that you can argue get Jalen as much as, as many t- as touches as, as Tatum because I think he gets as many, but give uh, Jalen the number one option title or say oh yeah the team is Jalen Brown's and but Tatum this, is a supporting. But this cast. is the thing. Do you think Brown benefits by being the number two? But that's what that's my point is. I don't think he is a number two. They call him the number two because there's this narrative that no, that has, Tatum is better. He has the one mentality. Right. That's what I'm saying. So he gets yeah. labeled as a two because Tatum is supposedly a little better. Yeah. I, I, I would argue that Brown is the better player, or at least the more consistent He's player. more consistent. I think uh, Tatum has those clutch plays where I you're like, I think Tatum is more talented, though. Yes. Yes. But Brown... And he's also physically bigger. Better. He's longer, yeah. right? So I yeah. think he can do more with more. Yes. I don't know. It that it, it pisses me off how disrespected Jalen Brown is. Get that man out of there. Well, we're going to do a full blown in depth episode about about the playoffs, so we could come with the stats and the the facts, stats and the facts. Well, I wanted you to say the facts. Oh, I did, I I yeah, that's on me. I dropped the ball on that one. Uh, I think that's more so. You were going for an alley oop, and the ball was right in your hands, and you just let it go completely and I, out of no, bounds. I went to dunk it, and then boom, hit the fucking rim. <laughs> oh, that's embarrassing. I missed the layup. Yes, I like that. I missed the layup dunk. Yes, a layup. And then dunk. you fall on your ass. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then I go to get up, and I slip, and I tear my Achilles. <laughs> Imagine, oh god, triple ba- triple whammy. Yo, I'm telling you right now, if if I could dunk, I would never dunk if I was playing in the NBA. Straight up. Because, yo, when you think about all those knee injuries, it doesn't come from layups. Bro, I love seeing Jimmy Butler get these, like, opportunities, like, breakaways, and he just lays it up. And everybody's like, he could have dunked. And I was like, nah, he's trying to win a title. It's No, but it's not only the smart play from an injury perspective. It does less damage to your knees. Yeah, longevity, yeah. It's flashy, but it's like, bro, nah. Like, it's good. I like seeing, like, Bam do it when it's, like, the, the momentum is changing, right? Oh, you get the crowd into it. You but get a layup, you're not getting that reaction from the crowd. But it's also different when you're seven foot dunking and you're six six. Yes. The six inches does help. You don't have to jump as high. You, yeah. Uh, most likely, you have longer arms. So there's just so many. But if I was if I was anything below, if I was six six or shorter, I would do exactly what Jimmy does. Oh, and those, like, when, when they, like, cock it back and it just, bam, slimish. That's so beautiful. But I agree. I fucking love Jimmy Butler when he's just like, nope, lay up. Yeah. <laughs> it's the it. safer and smarter play. Yeah, absolutely. Unless you're Iggy Dala in the, in the finals. Yo, you see, he said, he said, when everybody was like, uh, uh, there's a video of him uh, when he checked in like, like last couple seconds of that... Um, the finals game. Yeah. And uh, ESPN posted the video. It was like, I uh, appreciate it with Dollar. It might have been his last time checking into a basketball game. And he replies, why? 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 I can't play one more year? I can't run it back? <laughs> I think he was a comeback. <laughs> oh, he, he's definitely going to be on the team one way or another. Oh, yeah. 
He's going. If they win another ring, he's going to get the ring one way or another. Yeah, right. Because everybody he's on he's, he's, he's doing a, he's playing the Uda, the Udonis Haslam <laughs> role, which I did not realize he played as long as he did. I thought he retired a lot sooner than he actually technically did. Uh, Haslam? Yeah, he. Didn't I mean, re- he played this year. Oh wait, he's still playing. He's still playing. What? Yeah, it I was thought like, he retired last year. No, bro, he's still fucking playing. Apparently, he's considering this year being the final year, like like having like retiring this offseason. See that he is a perfect example of a man who loves his city, bro. It's, <laughs> and when it's you're getting paid two million dollars a year to play what five minutes a game, if that five minutes a year. <laughs> I don't think he has played five minutes the entire year. He played maybe twice and checked in for two and a half minutes altogether. Can you imagine being so privileged that you get paid two million a year to play what? I mean, to work, what, 1% of the year? Bro, he's getting paid two million dollars to stay in shape. <laughs> Because he does all the practices, has to maintain his body fat percentage. What's crazy to me, though, is this man is from Miami, went to a university in Miami. Oh, really? Got drafted by Miami and played his entire career in Miami. Oh, that's, that's, that's the, well, depending perspective, but I would say that's the life. Yeah. Home. Yeah, this dude literally, like, his Miami entire home. basketball career. Yeah. Everything Miami. Yeah. Mr. 305. He's the OG. Legit. Legitimately. Legit. Yeah. Or would he be 7A6? Would he be what? There's two area codes in Miami now. Uh, uh, I'm just saying. It's, it's I remember 305. And what was the one you just said? 7A6. 7A6. What was the other one? I remember being another. When I lived in Miami, there was uh, a... There was a third one? I, I don't know if it was a 786. Maybe it was a 786. I know 305, but there was another one. It's 786. Some people would have it. 786? It, yeah. Oh, okay. Well... 305 is the one everyone knows. Yeah. Well, uh, Buffalo, suppo- Western New York's getting a second area code, supposedly. To what? For phone numbers. No, I know, but what's the number? Who knows? They don't know yet. Supposedly, there's so many people now. I got my, uh, I got a prepaid uh, phone here yeah. that I don't use. I just wanted to, like, so I could start, like, building credit for when I move here. Prepaid. Oh, okay. And the, the fucking uh, number they gave me. It doesn't just, work. Oh no, it's so easy. Like they, they well, allowed me to pick the last They did? They yeah. allowed you? Yeah, they let me pick the last one. Oh, is that it digits. right there? No, no, no. This is the the one I have. I don't oh, want to okay. put it on blast. But uh, you know, I want to get these groupies texting me all the time. That is a fair point, because you're so sexy. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Like, tell me that's not the easiest fucking phone number in the world. Holy shit, but you picked the last. I only picked the last four. The last four. And I was just like, oh, damn, this is... That, that almost seems like a fake number. The, yeah. The, the numbers you see in a, in a film or TV show. Right. It's like if I gave a girl that number, they'd be like, okay, you're not interested. <laughs> I'd be like, no, no, that's my real number. I mean, I also have a wife, but so don't touch me. But yeah. But that would be your second number, though, right? Yeah. Yeah, so, so that the side chick. <laughs> yeah. Except Tiff knows about this number, too. Yeah. Oh. But I don't use it. I, like, I have the SIM card at home. Oh, so you... Okay, got it. Yeah. It's just there. And I, in a sense, it's prepaid. When I move here and make it like into in a postpaid, yeah. I can just keep that number. Yeah. So I was like... Because I was just going to cancel it. And I was like, eh. But, I, but I, when I saw that number, I was like, nah, I'm going to keep it. Yeah, so they don't do that for, like, major companies anymore, do they, though? What? You get to pick the last four digits? Yeah. For major companies? Oh, no. I picked the middle, the middle numbers. But you said the last four. I know. I meant the the middle numbers, and they okay. picked the last four. Oh wow! Yeah. So did you know what the last four were going to be before you picked the middle three, or was it just random? No, I saw the area code and the next three, and then they picked. So you got lucky with what they picked. Yeah, but there there was many options for that middle number. Yeah, but I'm I'm just saying the fact that you got this those th- last four to go with the three. Yeah. Because it could have been completely different numbers to go with the three, so then it, it becomes a hard... It's harder yeah. to remember. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I got lucky. That was a major company. I believe that's Verizon that I did that with. What? Yeah. Verizon. Verizon. Wow, you're... Do, 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 do. That's not their jingle. No. I just made it up. You're a Verizon boy now. I'm a Verizon boy. They're the best. Are they? Yeah, in America. Oh. Huh. I've heard T-Mobile's not bad in terms of coverage, but I feel like every company advertises being the best coverage. T-Mobile is 
Maybe if you're in Cali, you it might be better in certain spots, but overall it's trash. Really? Yeah. Oh. But everything it, it comes down to comparison. Now be, where phones are and every company is good. Yeah. Yeah, you can't really go wrong. Yeah. At least if you live in a in a in a, in a suburban area anyways. Everything everybody's got great. Right? Yeah. Anyways. Any closing statements today? Oh, that's all you wanted to talk about? My time's running out. You, 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 we still got 10 minutes. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. You little bitch. You little hoe. Trying to cut it short. I just thought, I you said, know, I want to. You know quickie. what it is? My quickie's 15 minutes, not five more. You know what it is, though? It's because our closing statements are not 30 seconds. If we say, if we start closing now, mm. we'll be done in 10 minutes. That's a fair point. Yeah, it is a fair point. That's why I said closing statements, not closing word. <laughs> Okay. So Bye. <laughs> so, what's been on your mind the most? Uh, this fucking wedding. Okay. It's uh, it's expensive. <laughs> and you have a cheap wedding. That's the crazy yeah, part. Yeah, 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 bro. I'm also broke. So. <laughs> when I was talking to people, saying, "Oh, it's only that," I'm like, "What? Only?" Yeah, bro. So that's the thing. So like, it it's so. Weird when you tell certain people the number of people coming to the wedding. Some people will be like, oh, it's a small wedding. And I'm like, yeah. And then other people are like, oh, that's a lot of people. And I'm just like, yeah. <laughs> I don't go to a lot of weddings. I don't know. Compared to who? What, Indian weddings? Yeah, it's small. Compared to a backyard wedding, it's big. But I, I heard that Hispanic weddings are massive too, though. They can be. I've always just heard from a lot of clients, uh, Indian clients, that like their fucking weddings are like hundreds of thousands of dollars. And that's cheap. Yeah. And they were like four days. Yes. Dude, yeah. uh, the richest dude in India, and he, he's, he's top five in the world, his wedding cost tens of millions of dollars, and it was for one full week. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I've had clients come to me twice in one week for, uh, for, the, for haircuts for the same fucking wedding. <laughs> They'll have families come up from all over the place. They get hotel. Bro, it's like these aren't even rich families. These are everyday well, this is how fucking pe- families. Well, this is like how people. hundred thousand dollar wedding. This is how people stay poor, bro. This is exactly how people stay poor. Yeah. What's been on your mind? No, I've just been in a very emotionless state. Of emotionless? Life. Yeah. In terms of? I'm just. I guess I'm in that phase right now where I'm just. Uh, nothing is hitting me unless I watch a, a film. Because like right now, I'm seeing what's going on in our country. Uh-huh. All the entitlement, all the privilege, all the double talk. Mm-hmm. And this past week, I've been watching a lot of war films. And people don't realize how good they have it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And... I'm not I'm not saying I don't complain, but normally when I complain there's a reason behind it or I'm doing something so that the complaining is motivation to fix the the issue. If that makes sense. Yeah. So for example, if I'm complaining about people being shitty drivers, they're actually shitty drivers. Yeah. Or if I'm complaining that I'm broke, I'm actually ma- is motivating me to not be broke. Right. If that makes sense. Right. But so much going on right now. It's people are complaining and they're complaining about the same thing for 10 years and they're literally doing nothing to change the issue. Or people are are complaining, making statements, and they have no information behind what they're complaining about. Yeah. And or or what they're complaining about, it's such a general statement. Cause you probably heard about Roe versus Wade, right? Yeah. And everybody from a social perspective, is saying, oh, this is bullshit, blah, blah, blah. But they don't they didn't do the research. Abortion is not in the Constitution, so it's not on the federal government to decide what states are legally able to decide. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying it's right, but if you want to live in America, that's how America works. Yeah, and I think that's what, like, uh, without getting too into it, I think that's part of what people are bothered by, that because of the Constitution, you have to govern this many people now, right? Compared to like what, what what the country was when these things were drafted versus now. It's like a lot of these principles no longer hold hold weight. And but we're still I, I disagree by that though. Because this is this is the quick issue. If your state I I know this comes into the money situation, but if a state doesn't allow for abortion, that's why there's fifty fucking states. 
Right, but how many people have the money to say, hey, I'm going to go across states to get an abortion? No, no, I'm not saying that. I'm saying if, if, if you dislike a country, if you dislike a state so much, move. That's also not easy, though. It's not, most people don't even have fucking access to, to move in within their own neighborhood, let alone out of state. It's the accessibility part of it, right? There, there, there's always, there's always a will. Yeah, but not, there's not always a way. <laughs> will always finds a way. Will's very good. <laughs> Damn, William. <laughs> Yo, okay, last closing statement before we go. Your fucking dog is disrespectful. Which one? Bacardi. Because I show up to the door, there's glass and screen. Oh, and he was barking see at you. See-through. He's barking at me like he doesn't know me. And I'm like, I know you smell me and I know you see me. And as soon as that barrier opens, he goes, oh, it's you. It's daddy. <laughs> Dad. Papa. I'm like, oh. Oh. You got, and I'm looking back. I'm like, do you see? I can see and smell and hear everything through this door. How the fuck can you not? He didn't recognize you at all? Every time, bro. Every time that I knock and he's there. Oh, it's like this every time? Every single time he's barking and like, who the fuck are you? I'm like, it's me, Bacardi. It's your daddy. You know, I'm right here. I know you can see me. I know you can smell me. You have a better sense of smell than I do. You have a better, like, wh- why? Yeah, that's, that's strange. And as soon as the door fucking opens, he's like, oh, daddy. Did he get horny? He was climbing up on me. <laughs> what, did you check his pee-pee? Uh, no. <laughs> he gets really stimulated with you. Is you know what I have that effect on uh, on living creatures. Is that is that so? Is yeah. that a fact? It's a fact. <laughs> I'd be out here spitting nothing but facts. Facts. Yeah. <laughs> Remember that when that uh, uh, MGK song came out? Facts. Uh, the the one where you're dissing Eminem. And Confess call you in the morning. Facts. He wanted oh, you to the, uh, uh, rap devil. Yeah, he wanted you to bet about Z. He did another, another. Facts. Facts. And then the, the the couple episodes after that, everything that you would oh, say. Oh, is that what? Like, that, that's what I was got it from. I would be like, facts. He I did not like, know that's facts. that's where you got that from. Yeah, from the MGK song. Just his, his ad libs. Facts. That blew my mind. I did not know this. The more you know. Yeah. No. I seriously. I just thought you, that was a typical Sebastian. Mannerism. I'll that go with that. Yeah, it was original. I made it up <laughs> myself. MGK, you owe me, bitch. <laughs> MGK. Fell the fuck off. Well, he's a he's a rocker now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, he he made the smart move. Yeah. In, instead of trying to prove Eminem right or wrong, he just <laughs> <laughs> he proved them right. <laughs> well, we'll never know because he completely left the genre altogether. Kanye, Kanye West. I guess we'll never know. <laughs> I'll close on that. I'll close on that. That is the, the most gangster shit I've ever seen in my life. Uh, everybody was wondering how I was going to act or what I was going to say if I didn't win tonight. I guess we'll never know. Yeah. L-O-P-H. Kadoodle. Do you want this to be a Rhinos and Ann show or a boner show? This was m- more boner, right? According to my pants, it was. <laughs> Just close it on that. <laughs> Just a friendly reminder, guys. Hit the subscribe button in this corner. And then for the newest video. Then for the most recommended. And then for our famous dick pic.